Hey guys, welcome back to Economics and Comics. So we're going to try from today. I haven't been doing comic reviews that much lately and I want to get back into it. So we thought we would play a game, a poll, and talk about hardcore number one, two, and three combined and what we think about it. And what's interesting about this is Joel from GodWithTheTwins.com is a movie critic. He's kind of got back into comics because of me and I recommend different books. And uh, he's read Hardcore too, So I thought it would be interesting to get his point of view on it. You know, because I'm a comic guy. He's a movie guy. I'm a movie guy too, but he's a, <laughs> he's a movie critic. So we're just going to shoot a game of pool and whatever and talk about Hardcore. Okay, so enjoy. Are you breaking? Yeah, I'm breaking. All right, Joel's breaking. So anyway, um, Hardcore is written by Andy Diggle, okay? And uh, the art's by uh, Vidi, and Lucas is the uh, colorist. And the covers, all the covers are done by Dan Panashian, who we've both met. Actually, did you make anything? Uh, scratch. Okay, it, who we both met, and Joel actually got an original piece done by him. Um, yeah, I really like his art. What was it? What was the piece of? Um, he had done some art for uh, The Witcher. So I had him do a custom piece. For, it's a for, full 11 by 17 or whatever. Of a character from the, the video game. Well, he did the comics for The Witcher. Uh, some of the cover art. And so I had him do a character from The, the Witcher. Series. Yeah, and I saw it. And he's really nice. I saw some original Batman, Batwoman covers, etc. But uh, regardless... Oh, what the heck? That was in there. Um, regardless, let's talk about hardcore. So, it, I love it. I think that this book is going to, these comics, is definitely going to be a TV show or something. Or even a movie. I think it's even, I, I think a movie would be more fitting. I don't know, what do you think, Joel? Uh, yeah, actually, it's very much like a James Bond movie condensed down into a, it, like they take out every extraneous bit and just make it just like the action scene after one after another. I, I think it's really cool. It's, uh, yeah, there's a lot, of mo a, lot, a lot of parts in it that cross over in a lot of movies we've seen. But basically, the, the, the comic book hardcore starts off as uh, this guy in a meeting or something. Yeah, his name's Agent. Or no, no, not that. I'm so there's like this mob boss meeting of sorts or something. And this, this guy is like... Uh, Every strikes. Okay, this guy is, uh, why don't you tell him? Uh, yeah, so the opening scene of the comic is, uh, it's like a mob boss meeting. So it kind of, what they're trying to do is, is show you how the uh, hardcore system works. And what it is, is they, sh what do they do? Shoot a little, basically, like, computer chip into, they a, basically into a person? They target someone, like a sniper targets them, and they shoot this little, like, tracker inside the person. But what it does is, It'll it attaches to their central nervous system, and it allows you to control the body uh, and mind of the person. So basically, there's a guy, like a soldier of sorts, inside this machine. And once the target has been hit, he can control everything in the guy. Kind of like a... Uh, a drone of sorts, but control the human. So, like, say say there's a firefighter or something like that, and the guy gets shot. He doesn't really feel it, necessarily. He might feel a little bit, but uh, I'm going to hit, hit, hit. It's going to hit that, hit that, and then this is going to hit that. You know what I mean? And so, um, anyway, the beginning scene is this guy. They take over this guy. Basically, the thing is, they it gets tag. The, it's the brother of a major mob boss. Yeah. So okay. they tag this a guy that can get into places that they can't, and then basically assassinate everyone in there. And long story short, at the end of it, <clears throat> there's no other way except to grab a guy and jump out of a window. <laughs> yes. And then he he jumps out of the window, and then he exports or like almost matrixy comes out of the thing in the headquarters. Yeah. Well, the idea is when you're in the body of somebody else in their mind, if you die in that body, you, you, you will die in your body as well, in real life. Yeah. So it's very much... Uh, a lot of movies. 
Yeah, a lot of movies do that. Uh, somewhat like surrogate. Well, that's like The Matrix, too. A little bit like The Matrix. Um, I, one of the ones I compared it most to would be Altered Carbon. Because in that one, they're literally hopping from body to body and using the body, and then they can get out of it. By, yeah. By kind of like saving their mind as a, as a backup, uh, like a hard drive. So, anyway, moving forward, you know, you find out about the program or something, and there's a certain. There's a certain location where they have the hardcore machinery where the, the agent goes inside. And so basically, they, the, the whole operation gets uh, tapped. Yeah, so Agent Drake is the main character. And he's the one that's the kind of, uh, I think he's former military and he's the one that goes inside of the different people's minds. Yeah, uh, but the actual, aid, the place where it's located, it's not like a top secret installation, whatever. And, uh, yeah, it gets attacked by the... They get attacked, yeah. Yeah, by the uh, kind of the creator of the program, like a jealous uh, ex-creator. Yeah, that they got rid of. And basically, the dude, the main character, is stuck in the hardcore machine, but he's also already on another mission. Yeah. He's inside a drug cartel employee or something like that. Yeah, the, uh, like the second in command of a drug cartel. And so... So he's stuck in the machine, but also stuck in the body of this other person. And the only way that... Uh, basically, he's stuck in the person. He, and, and, and they're trying to break into the machine and kill him. So he's only got like a certain amount of time to get to the headquarters to stop the guy from killing him. But he's in another person's body. And so, if he dies in that body, he's dead. If he can't get there in time to save himself, he's dead. Right, Joel? Yeah. It's, uh, it, so, I mean, the setup is basically just to allow as much action as possible, jumping from action scene to action scene to action scene, in, in the, uh, the cartel uh, henchman's uh, number two, in his body, uh, he happens to be sleeping with the uh, cartel leader's Wife. wife, which is yeah. So then, so then, so that gives even another element that they have to contend with because the cartel leader finds out and is now coming after him to kill him as well. Yeah. So they're trying to kill him inside the machine where he is in, in submerged and he cannot get out, and it's sealed. And then the uh, the drug cartel or whatever, everyone's chasing him. Not only that, like uh, some SEAL teams or something. Yeah. Well, there's Everyone... even an extra element because the uh, in that opening sequence where he was inside the mob boss. That whole the whole reason that they did that mission is because that group stole a nuclear weapon. Oh yeah, now, that's the so, other part. Yeah, so. It's trying to stop the nuclear weapon. Now, they found the nuclear weapon. You're right. They found the nuclear weapon. Of course, right now he's with the <laughs> he's with the uh, wife of the mobster trying to escape, and uh, they do they do get away, and eventually. They meet up with the team that, that are the people that tag the people. They snipe them and put the thing. And they hook up with his original team. Um, and they're all off the grid. Everything is... Off. Yeah, well, the, the hardcore program, there's only yeah. one unit. There's, o there's only one There's uh, only base. one there's hard hardcore program. machine. And uh, so... So basically, he meets up with the unit and they arrange to get a plane to get out of there, right? Joel? Yep. And go and, ahead uh, and keep talking. Well, I don't want to, we don't want to spoil too We're many things. We're spoiling it right now. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, so that to add an, even another layer of complications, uh, the pickup team that's supposed to help them ends up betraying them. Yeah, so, so basically, yeah, they get betrayed. And then, so then it switches off to the President of the United States and Air Force One, right? Yes. Who is looking like Obama. And, uh, well, the, the reason the president is involved is because in that opening sequence, the mob boss had, had stolen a nuclear weapon, and then one of the uh, villains, uh, I guess it was a SEAL team or something, a rogue team, ended up finding the nuclear weapon and stealing it. Yeah, so, the, but they're brief the debriefing the president on Air Force One. And so, it shows like an F-16 is there protecting them, they're in the air, and, uh, they're telling them about the hardcore program and it was taken over and the hardcore building where the, the, the machine is actually located is in the center of the major city yeah. or something like that. 
And the president's like, well, blah, blah, you're fired or whatever, but let's figure this out. I'm going to try to come right back here. It's pretty much impossible. And, uh, oh, shit. look at that. That was magical. And so, anyway, during that, a drone comes and it's going for the, no, you, wait, you got to come behind the line. No, not on a, not after the break. Dude, I don't know what game of pool you guys are playing. BCA rules allow. Uh, you you know, can put the ball wherever. Wherever you want. This is not nine ball. This is eight ball. Yeah, this is BCA rules. Though. Okay, well I'm playing <laughs> house rules over here, and it's illegal. And anyway, so there's a drone, and it's going after the uh, Air Force One, and the fighter jet. They they say take it out, you know. So the fighter jet shoots and locks on it, and he shoots to take out the drone. And what it was is. It was, looks like this game's over almost. <laughs> well, no, there was a nuke. No, no, no. A, the, was it the, now was the stolen nuke the one on the bottom of the drone? One of them. I, did I, they, I think they might have stolen more than one nuke. Or maybe that was why they stole it. And that, Well, anyway, there's a nuke on the bottom of the drone. And they don't see it in time, so the missile ignites the nuke. The, in turn, blowing up Air Force One and everything around it, which killed the president and all that. And that's where it left off. So you have the, supposedly the president's dead. They've set off a nuke in the air and you have teams chasing down, what's his name? Agent what? Uh, Agent Drake. Agent Drake. And, and basically the, the interior art is really good. That's by, uh, what is it? The, uh, is it Alessandro V? Yeah. And then the, um, is it Via? Anyway. And the writer's Andy Diggle. Andy Diggle, which is an interesting name. And so, I don't know, what do you think, I mean, from a perspective, Joel, of yours, for kind of an, you're not an outsider, but at the same time, yeah, I'm you're sorry, I certainly back, haven't read as many comics as you have. You've <laughs> definitely come back into the fold of comic book collecting. Um, and yeah, well, certain things we're reading together, not together, but you buy some things that I recommend, and it seems to me like you actually enjoy this one. Yes, very much so. Uh, it, and it, it's just, it, I mean, w what it is is that, and Andy Diggle has talked about it, it's an experiment to show how much action they can just cram in one single story. And so it's, that's, that's what they're doing essentially, is just trying to, to do as much wild stunts, crazy action, crazy events happening uh, as possible to this one guy stuck in this mission. Now there's other, there's other stories that have lots of actions going on there, but uh, yeah. Well, this uh, this story uh, of hardcore came from uh, a while back. Many, I, I'm not sure if it was years, but many many months ago, uh, Top Cow did a thing called uh, Top Cow's uh, Pilots, Top Cow Pilot episodes, and uh, one of them was hardcore, and it was a single issue comic. And now this is basically they've taken that story and expanded it into a full comic run. So, so basically, overall, man, I mean, to get to the point, we're going to play a, a game of pool and talk and about Bill it. Bill won, and I let him. I let him win. Oh yeah, house, house, house rules. Yeah, let me guess. Wait, he dropped a scrap <laughs> right here. Dude, that is not legal. Anyway, um, from a film critic eye. How do you look at it? Like, I mean, do you think that it's got what it takes to be a decent action-packed movie? Yeah, is no, for sure. For, for sure, this is something that could be translated onto the, the big screen. It would it's, probably work real well, I think. Too. Yeah, I mean, obviously, this is. I'm assuming it's a either five or six issue run. We'll see. I don't yeah. know the answer to that. I mean, um, it probably is. I hope it keeps going. I have a feeling it's been picked up by something, whether it's Netflix or somebody. I they probably have to, if it becomes like a TV series or a movie or something, they, they probably have to expand on the story a little they, bit. Because it, it goes have, really quick. I think this needs to be a movie for sure. Yeah. I think there's, be, there's a lot of movies similar. But overall, I love the book. Um, I mean, I would recommend it to anybody. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the art is fantastic. I like the writing. It's very quick. There's no lulls in the story. Um, I, I think the one thing, and it's a very minor uh, complaint, is, is simply that... The, the way the art is done, they made the president look like Obama. And, and the only reason I don't like that is because it pulls you out of this slightly futuristic, you know, uh, storytelling concept where it's not, you know, it's not present day, it's not real. 
but by putting somebody in there that looks like a real person, it kind of it takes me out a little bit. It know. takes you out of the story. Yeah, just a little bit. Like, but it's, it's, oh, that's like, a minor yeah. right. Yeah. But I understand that. But at the same time, I don't remember if there was a certain date and time. It could have been based in the past. Or this book could have been written before then. Uh, I don't know, but I understand what you're saying there. Um, but again, it's an alternate yeah. reality. Well, what, one of the interesting things is uh, the artist himself said that he went to like... So all, everything that he's trying to do visually uh, is, all, is trying to be as realistic as possible. So for example, with the cartel dealers or the cartel guy's uh, mansion, so this, the artist went to a mansion like that to look at everything so that he could draw something as... Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I didn't so, know that. Yeah, sure. So every, every, uh, same, there's an a action sequence in a Lamborghini. So he went and got a Lamborghini to be able to see and draw, you know, correctly. So did stuff. you, is that stuff that's written in the beginning of the book and or in the back? No, I think it's written in the back. No, it's in the back of the book. Okay, uh, so they, they do little they interviews. They dive in. That's kind of cool. But overall, I love the book. And uh, from my end, I think it's going to be real popular and it probably will end up being on the screen or something. And from your point of view, you like it too. I do. I, I really like it. Yeah. I think that's super interesting. And I think this might be something you guys enjoyed. So shooting this <laughs> comic book review, uh, hardcore one, two, and three. I hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you next time.